Howdy, denizens of the internet. Your former network executive reaction to TV Guide's Fall Preview 1984. Of course, 1984 was the year George Orwell predicted that we would be living in a surveillance society with corrupt governments and a manipulation of words and their meanings. Well, all I can say is, luckily, that hasn't happened yet. So, let's get started by putting our TV guide in context with the most important events that made news in 1984. Brunei became the sixth member of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. <laughs> Boy, we all remember that. Steve Jobs launched the Macintosh computer. UCLA Medical Center announced the first embryo transplant from one woman to another. Astronauts Bruce McCandless and Robert Stewart make the first untethered spacewalk. 1984 Winter Olympics held in Sarajevo, Yugoslavia. The TED conference is founded. Canadian PM Pierre Trudeau announces his retirement. CIA station chief in Beirut, William Buckley, is kidnapped by Islamic Jihad. Diggy Lou, Diggy Lay wins the Eurovision Song Contest for Sweden. The Soviet Union boycotts the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. Tetris is released in the Soviet Union on the Electronica 60. Cirque du Soleil is founded. Upper Volta changes its name to Burkina Faso. John DeLorean acquitted of trafficking cocaine. Thomas the Tank Engine debuts in the UK. The Detroit Tigers win the World Series. The Terminator hits the big screen. Indira Gandhi is assassinated. Ronald Reagan defeats Walter Mondale for the US presidency. And the first hackers conference is held. Wow, that was a lot, and it barely skimmed the highlights. Now, on with TV Guide's Fall Preview 1984. First up is The Cosby Show, NBC. The Cosby Show centers on the lives of the Huxtables, obstetrician Cliff and his lawyer wife Claire, their daughters Sandra, Denise, Vanessa, and Rudy, and son Theo. Based on the stand-up comedy of Bill Cosby, the show focused on his observations of family life. Starring He Who Shall Not Be Named, Felissa Rashad, Malcolm Jamal Warner, Keisha Knight Pulliam, Tempest Bledsoe, Sabrina LaBeouf, and Lisa Bonet. Lasted eight seasons. Sample episode. Cliff forces the entire family to hold a funeral for Rudy's dead goldfish, Lamont. This was a brilliant, funny show. H how to put it into the context of what we know about Cosby now? Two things pop into my mind. Can one watch the show and still find laughs? And does the kind of genius Cosby possessed have to come with a bad side? I use the past tense because I have no doubt he still possesses his comedic faculties. I, I just don't care to find out. Charles in Charge, CBS. Charles, a college student, moves in with the Powell family as the housekeeper, babysitter, and friend to the children. Along with his best friend, Buddy, Charles attempts to manage his life, especially college and girls, as well as tend to the family. Starring Scott Bayo, Willie Ames, Nicole Eggert, Josie Davis, Alex Polinsky, and James T. Callahan. Lasted one season on CBS and four more in syndication. Sample episode. Charles encourages Leela to join the cheerleading squad and Douglas to join the soccer team and needs to boost their spirits when they do not succeed. Yes, Charles in Charge lasted only one season on CBS, but there was a mini trend of production studios, in this case Universal, taking network shows that lasted only one season and then turning them into somewhat successful syndicated series. One other bit of trivia, Michael J. Fox was originally offered the starring role. Cover up, CBS. Fashion photographer Danny Reynolds' life suddenly changes after the death of her husband. That's when she discovers that he was actually an undercover CIA agent. When she learns he had been murdered, she recruits Mac Harper, a former Special Forces operator, to help her find her husband's killers. 
Impressed, Henry Towler, her husband's boss, offers her a job with the CIA. Danny would pretend she was still a photographer and mark her male model. Starring Jennifer O'Neill, John Eric Hexham, Richard Anderson, and Anthony Hamilton. Lasted one season. I'm going to dispense with the sample episode here is as what this show had become notorious for was the death of its star john eric hexham who apparently while bored during shooting took a prop gun loaded with blanks and intended to play a practical joke accidentally shot himself in the head the wadding in a blank can still kill at close range cbs soldiered on replacing hexham with anthony hamilton and Gruesomely finished the year. Dreams, CBS. Welder Gio Minnelli is the charismatic singer of the Philadelphia band Dreams. Gino is joined by guitarist writer Phil, drummer Wiener, and vocalist Martha. Lisa, a rich girl with a powerful voice, joins them at Uncle Frank's Club, starring John Stamos, Jamie Gertz, Kane DeVore, Albert Macklin, Sandy Freeman, and Ron Karabatsos. Twelve episodes were shot, but only five were aired, not surprisingly. Sample episode. Phil questions if he can continue with the life of a musician and attempts to change his future by doing a computer course. I wonder if the name Gino Minnelli was supposed to be a riff on Canadian superstar Gino Vanelli. ER, CBS. Dr. Scheinfeld, freshly divorced, becomes a physician on call at the emergency room of a Chicago hospital, where he soon locks horns with the vivacious Dr. Eve Sheridan and attracts the puppy love of pediatrics nurse Corey. Situational humor mixes with tense medical crises, starring Elliot Gould, Conchata Farrell, Lynn Moody, Shuko Akin, Bruce A. Young, Corinne Borer, Mary McDonnell, and some regular appearances by George Clooney and Jason Alexander. Lasted just one season. Sample episode. Dr. Sheridan's sister Karen is in town to help decide if their father should be put in a nursing home. Howard tries his hardest to put the moves on Karen, but Eve warns him to stay away. Meanwhile, an unconscious young boy is brought into the ER and the staff suspects child abuse. I really enjoyed this show, but please do not confuse it with ER, the hugely successful show on NBC from 1984. This show's title had a slash between the E and the R. Huge difference. And the fact that George Clooney appeared in both should also not be a source of confusion. Finder of Lost Loves, ABC. Carrie Maxwell is a private investigator and owner of Maxwell Unlimited, MU specializes in helping people find their lost loves. Each week, Maxwell, along with Daisy Lloyd and Rita Hargrove, manage to help yet another heartbroken person reunite with someone from their past. Starring Tony Franciosa, Deborah Adair, and Anne Jeffries. Lasted one season. Sample episode. Carrie must track down a married woman's former lover to save her dying son. Daisy helps Travis Burke, a trucker, find the woman he fell in love with after hearing her voice on a CB radio. This was a silly show, but I remember it fondly as the kind of show TV network still tried to pull off. Now the network suggests reality shows and endless procedurals and streaming is nothing but dystopian sci-fi. Even in failure, these shows defined what network TV was all about. Glitter, ABC, an Aaron Spelling drama about a top entertainment magazine titled Glitter, featuring stories about the glamorous lifestyles of the rich and famous, starring David Burney, Morgan Brittany, Christopher Mayer, Artie Johnson, Diane Kay, Timothy Patrick Murphy, and Arthur Hill. Fourteen episodes were shot, but only five were aired. Sample episode, 
Margaret Davis, a grand dam of soap opera, seems destined to die at the hands of vengeful producer Ethel Woodley. Sam and Kate suspect there's a softer side to the temperamental tennis champ Rusty Walker. This spelling potboiler didn't last the year. It did follow the usual formula of good-looking young people with a well-known star as the matriarch, or as in this case, patriarch, played by Arthur Hill. I loved the name of the character Murphy played, Chip Craddock. The show was up against NBC's powerful Thursday sitcom lineup and didn't have a chance. Miami Vice, NBC. James Sonny Crockett and Ricardo Rico Tubbs are undercover Miami police detectives. Their world is the sordid yet distinctly high-flying and glamorous world of drug dealers. To fit in, they need to look and act the part. Flashy cars, trendy clothes, glamorous women. Starring Don Johnson, Philip Michael Thomas, Sandra Santiago, Olivia Brown, and Edward James Olmos lasted five pastel seasons. Sample episode. Hard rock maestro Ted Nugent explodes as psychopath Charlie Bassett. Charlie is a thug who uses his stunning wife Callie to lure rich men to their doom. In the midst of an undercover op at a five-star hotel, Tubbs watches his friend Burnett try not to succumb to Callie's charms. Miami Vice was another huge hit from Brandon Tartikoff's time at NBC. Rumor has it that Tartikoff issued a memo to series creator Anthony Yurkovich that read MTV Cops. Anthony disavows that claim, but I like it, so I'm sticking with it. Show was produced by Michael Mann and has his dynamic, stylish fingerprints all over it. He demanded that no earth tones were to be used. And who can forget Jan Hammer's opening theme music? More importantly, guys started to roll up the sleeves of their jackets. Hawaiian Pizza Heat. No, sorry, Hawaiian Heat. ABC. Chicago police officers Riley and Sikowski leave the cold climates of their hometown for jobs with the Honolulu, Hawaii Police Department. As if the climate isn't reason enough for anyone to envy them, they share a house with a very beautiful helicopter pilot named Irene, starring Robert Ginty, Jeff McCracken, Tracy Scoggins, Branscombe Richmond, and Mako. Lasted 10 episodes till December. Highway to Heaven, NBC. Jonathan Smith is a probationary angel sent to Earth to help people in need. In the course of an assignment, he meets Mark Gordon, an embittered retired policeman now bouncing from job to job. At first, distrustful of Jonathan, Mark helps him complete his assignment and comes to believe in his true nature. He volunteers to assist Jonathan in helping troubled people on Earth, starring Michael Landon and Victor French. Lasted five seasons. Sample episode. A high school baseball star is being scouted by the pros, much to his delight and that of his father, who's been coaching him. But a tragic motorcycle accident permanently shatters both their dreams, and Jonathan must find a way to help the boy make lemonade from this crop of lemons. When you think of the outlandish premise network executives had greenlit, this was actually a tough sell, primarily because of its religious underpinning in a very secular Hollywood. Many of the shows were written and directed by Landon and dealt with some very serious topics in a heartfelt way. The show was cut short by the writer's strike in 1988, but by then the show had run its ratings course. Hot Pursuit, NBC. James Weiler and his wife Kate Weiler are an upper-middle-class couple in Kentucky. Kate is a successful automotive engineer, while Jim is a practicing veterinarian. But then Kate is framed for murdering her boss, Victor Mordian, and sentenced to prison. Kate escapes from prison and, together with her husband, go on the run, tracking clues to the real culprits. Starring Carrie Keene, Eric Pierpoint, and Dina Merrill. 13-episode shot, 
10 aired. The pursuit ended late December. <laughs> Get it? Anyway, a female automotive engineer. Of course, that's why this show failed. Who would believe that? Hunter, NBC. Rick Hunter is a renegade cop who bends the rules and takes justice into his own hands. Partnered with the equally stunning and rebellious Sergeant McCall, the tough-minded duo set out to crack down on L.A.'s slimiest criminals. Starring Fred Dreyer, Stephanie Kramer, Charlie Hallahan, and Garrett Morris, lasted seven seasons. Clearly, Fred Dreyer was channeling Dirty Harry in look and demeanor. Stephanie Kramer had the requisite puffy hair of that era. The show was famous for its car chases that ended up in fiery explosions and a bit more violence than what one would have expected on network TV. It's your move, NBC. Enrapturing high school grifter Matt Burton may finally have met his match when his widowed mother begins dating their new apartment building neighbor Norman, who's wise to Matt's schemes and attempts to foil every one of them, hoping to set his would-be stepson on the straight and narrow. Starring Jason Bateman, Karen Kay, Trisha Cast, Ernie Sabella, and David Garrison, lasted half a season. Sample episode. When financial problems affect booking a band for the school dance, Matt and Eli create a fake band, the dregs of humanity. Things get sticky when Norman asks to interview the band for an article he has pitched to a local magazine. According to Bateman, the reason the show was canceled was because NBC was receiving letters from mothers across the country whose kids were getting into trouble at school by mimicking Matthews, i.e. Bateman's, antics. Jesse, ABC. Dr. Jesse Hayden, a female psychiatrist, is hired by a California police department to help the departmental employees as well as the victims. Starring Lindsay Wagner, Tony Lobianco, Celeste Holm, and J.D. Hinton. Lasted eight episodes on ABC and then burned off four remaining shows in syndication. Murder, She Wrote. CBS. Former high school English teacher and famed mystery writer Jessica Fletcher has a gift for solving mysteries. You see, it seems murder follows her around, especially in her hometown of Cabot Cove, Maine. Jessica is sometimes assisted by her friend, Dr. Seth Hazlitt, or the local sheriff, Amos Tupper. Lasted 12 seasons, starring Angela Lansbury, William Wyndham, Tom Bosley, and Ron Masek. Sample episode. Jessica and a slew of passengers are forced to take refuge from a storm at a remote diner when one of the passengers is found stabbed in his seat. That, that, that would hurt. Oh, on a bus to Boston. Hugely successful, long-running show. The joke was that if you saw Jessica Fletcher, you ran because someone was going to get killed. Lansbury tried to quit several times because of the grind of doing the show, but each time they convinced her to stay. Jean Stapleton was offered the part, but she turned it down. Paper Dolls, ABC. Paper Dolls is an American glossy primetime soap opera set in New York's fashion industry. The show centers on top modeling agency owner Racine, her conflicts with the family of cosmetics tycoon Grant Harper, and the careers of two teenaged models, starring Morgan Fairchild, Lloyd Bridges, Dak Rambo, Mimi Rogers, Jennifer Warren, Richard Bamer, Brenda Vaccaro, Terry Farrell, Jonathan Frakes, and Nicolet Sheridan. The show was canceled in less time than it took for me to read the cast list. Actually, half a season. Partners in Crime, NBC. Carol Stanwyck and Sidney Kovac have nothing in common. They are the polar opposites of one another. Carol is a former socialite who lost her fortune and is now making a living as a photographer and a courier. Sydney's father is a con man, so she knows her way around the streets. She is also a pickpocket and a jazz bass player. The only thing they have in common 
is the fact that they were both married to Raymond Caulfield, a private investigator. When he was killed, he left everything, including his agency, to them. After apprehending the one who killed him, they decide to run the agency themselves. Helping them is Shane, Raymond's assistant, Raymond's mother, Janine, and police lieutenant, Verosky, starring Linda Carter, Lonnie Anderson, Walter Olkowitz, Leo Rossi, and Eileen Eckhart. Lasted half a season. Jazz bass player? People do the craziest things. ABC. A horrible, nasty, unfunny clone of Candid Camera starring Burt Convy lasted two episodes. Punky Brewster, NBC. Punky Brewster is a show about a girl named Penelope Punky Brewster. She is abandoned with her dog, Brandon, in a supermarket by her mother. She doesn't want to stay in an orphanage and is befriended by Henry Warnemont, who adopts her, starring Solil Moon Fry, George Gaines, Sherry Johnson, and Susie Garrett. Lasted four seasons. Sample episode. Just as Henry was planning to adopt Punky, a Fenster Hall bureaucrat named Simon P. Chillings rescinds his custody, citing his age, his illness, and his lack of a steady income. Mike Fulton tries to change his mind, but to no avail. A pleasant little show built around a pretty nasty premise with an engaging lead. Gaines was extremely charming. Street Hawk, ABC. When officer Jesse Mock is crippled after an assault by an old enemy, his time on motorcycle field duty seems finished. That is, before Norman Tuttle recruits him for a secret government project. Mock is to be the test pilot for the Street Hawk, an advanced motorcycle that carries tremendous firepower and is capable of speeds of over 300 miles per hour. This deal includes special surgery to repair his legs while still pretending that he is handicapped. Starring Rex Smith, Richard Venture, Joe Regalabuto, and Janine Wilson, debuted in January of 1985 and lasted half a season. Sample episode. Jesse and Norman protect a beautiful Las Vegas showgirl who must get to a courthouse to testify against her mobster boyfriend, but she'll need every weapon at Street Hawk's disposal to make it there alive and in time. Was this a two-wheeled version of Knight Rider? I don't know. Pretty hard to tell. Apparently, Rex Smith did all his own riding, except for the dangerous stunt stuff. The role was originally offered to Gene Stapleton, but she turned it down. <laughs> I'm kidding. Three's a crowd. ABC. Jack Tripper's cohabitation with Vicki Bradford is complicated by her hostile father's interference as Jack's landlord. Starring John Ritter, Mary Cataret, Alan Campbell, and Robert Mandon. Lasted one season. Sample episode. When Jack has trouble performing, Vicky wonders why. She talks to her mother, who says her father was like that, and it was because of another woman. She says that's not it, until she sees Jack with Easy's girlfriend. This sequel to Three's Company was a middling success, but could not stand up to the A-team. Who's the boss? ABC. Former Major League Baseball player Tony Michelli and his daughter Samantha arrive at the Connecticut household of executive Angela Bauer, where Tony has taken a job as live-in housekeeper. Angela is uptight and obsessed with her work. Her son Jonathan is shy and lacks self-esteem, and her mother, Mona Robinson, is a man-hungry vixen. Starring Tony Danza, Judith Light, Alyssa Milano, Catherine Helmond, and Danny Pintaro lasted eight seasons. Sample episode. Tony and his Connecticut sports buddy Jeff accept to be drinking test subjects for a safe driving course demonstration. The kids visit Brooklyn. Angela gets drunk with rich neighbors who envy her hunky Tony. When he arrives back drunk, there is a food fight which ends up with him carrying Angela to bed where they kiss. 
This was a huge hit for ABC and a really fun sitcom to watch. As premises went, it was not a strain to believe the setup, and the cast was charming. V. NBC. A year after Liberation Day, courtesy of the red dust bacteria, the humanoid lizard-like aliens develop a resistance to the microorganism and try to regain control of the Earth. Only now, some humans are knowingly working with them. Starring Mark Singer, Faye Grant, Michael Ironside, Jane Badler, June Chadwick, Jennifer Cook, and Robert Englund. Lasted half a season. Sample episode. Immune to the effects of the red dust bacteria, Diana activates her unstoppable Triac superweapon to reduce Bates and the city of Los Angeles to rubble. V was based on two previous miniseries, which were successful, which the show was supposed to continue. But alas, it was canceled after one season. Of course I love this show. The special effects would look cheesy now, but when the aliens extended their jaw to eat rodents, that was awesome. The aliens uh, would take human form, but there were always a few things to recognize with them, like extended pinky fingers. Doesn't get much better than that. Now let's dive in to see how the critics' predictions went. Under hits, The Cosby Show, that was a hit. Finder of Lost Loves, a miss. Hunter, hit. Paper Dolls, big miss. Maybes is such a cheat category, but they gave Glitter a maybe, miss. Highway to Heaven, hit. Jesse, miss. Murder, she wrote, hit. Three's a crowd, miss. V, miss. As far as their misses predictions, as far as their miss, miss predictions, whatever. They got Punky Brewster wrong and Miami Heat way wrong. Can one recognize massive cultural influences? Probably not. So that's it for TV Guide Fall Preview 1984. What did you think? Any favorites of yours in here? Till next time, denizens. Be seeing you.